We'll just take that up there. What we then want to do is we want to position the foot pad. Directly under the feet. So what you do is make sure that both feet sit comfortably on that. You're comfy sitting there? Yep. Okay, right. Take the left one out of the road to start with. And as I said, when you've looked at it, if you see there's any high toes, that's the first thing you're coming to after you take your tracing. And just keep the pencil perpendicular to there. So, for the sake of argument, pretend that's got a flat bottom, the second toe is high. What you do is take your upright, bring your finger down onto the top, and then that will give you the distance that you've got there. The standard toe box height is about 2.5 centimetres. So anything below that, you're in okay. Anything above that, then you should delineate it. So for the sake of this, we've got one there. Take a distal mark and take a medial mark if it's on the medial beam. So that when you come to rectify that, you've got your bisection and you've got the height that's there. There is a small idiot's guide to the galaxy on the left hand side here, so that if you're doing it, you can always refer to. But in terms of your tape, in, what you want to make sure is that when you put the tape down, because the tension is the big thing that everybody talks about. What you don't want is to have it that tight that you're pulling the foot away from the line. By the same token, you don't want it that slack that there's a belly in your tape. It's the halfway house there. But what I always recommend is put a single line through the centre of your tape point, and that will delineate your joints, because that shows the, the last maker just exactly where you're going to, uh, or where you've taken your mark. The behind joint, Again, if you want to make sure that you're in the correct place, the thing that you can do is pull your tape in that wee bit tighter because you'll feel the run of the first and fifth joint there and then let it back out to the same tension as before. And then to the end step. Now this is the one that most folk get wrong. Palpate for the base of the fifth metatarsal and make sure that the tape is on the distal side of the base of the fifth. Depending on your foot topography, so if you've got a cavus or you've got a planus, the angle that you come forward will be between 8 and 10 degrees on the perpendicular. And again, what you've got is a situation where you mark the centre of your tape. Now, my old man did this for 40 years, so part and parcel of this was handed down. There is, there should be a relative balance between the three ticks that you've got there. Approximately about 2.5 centimetres distance. So if you find on your instep that you're miles back here and the other two are down there, you know you've got it in the wrong spot. Okay? Now, the really important thing here is, is if you keep your tape on the dorsum of the foot, if you just lift your heel for me please, you're taking your tape down and through the distal posterior border and you're coming up to the bisection here. And then when you go to the short heel, move that through to the talus and you've got your short heel there. Now for a standard foot like this, another useful rule of thumb is that there should be 2.5 centimetres of a difference between your long heel and your short heel circumference. Doesn't always happen if you've got a sharp core, if you've got a foot where there's significant deformity, that will not hold true. But generally speaking, for something where there is symmetry here and there is a balance in the thirds, that's so. It's just these are just wee steps for a hint to make sure that you get it in the correct place. Okay, so once we've done all that, let's just choose the next thing. Personally, I don't like measures that are taken that way because folk will not, they'll fiddle about, they're not all you know responsive, like my friend here. So, to make sure that I'm taking all my measurements in the same plane, I lift the foot into the stick, I secure it at the tail so that the heel's there, and I bring the stick in to touch the toe. I'm not pushing it in, and I'm not pulling back, it's just touch the toe. Now again, I'm in control, I'm using the weight of the limb, I can remove the foot, 
but they are not needed, so I know that I've got an accurate stick length. Elastic stick lengths come when you're on the side, I believe, and you try and pull that away, or try and pull the foot away. It's much easier to control it up and out to the side. Okay, so what we've got and what I meant by doing a rectification, any wee kinks, any wee lumps and bumps, here, you can take that out, similarly here, there. Now, one thing that I hold issue with these V's and all the other bits and pieces, I learned, as did Tony learned, um, up at Bolton's when you were making last, you want this as clear as possible, you want to be able to take a last, you want to be able to lay that down. Your stick size here on the, the actual foot will be the actual stick size, so it will be let's say 3EG or 4EG. Because in your commentary and what you ask for in terms of your shoes, if that's a pronated foot and you want an allowance of three rather than two, then you tell the last maker what's happening there, so they know at least what the, what the score is. As far as your high toes are concerned, if you like, if you take that into there, if you draw across, then that's the position of your high toe. You can then take these marks out. And essentially, you know exactly where the height of the high toe is. So you've got an accurate, clear definition of what your foot measurement is. No Pablo Picassos or any other bits in between there. If you've got um, sinks, by all means, you can mark it in as a sink and take that back. But again, 